Welcome back everyone. Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. This video is part two in a series I'm doing called How to Build a Biblical Resources Library. If you have not seen part one, I strongly recommend you watch that first because what I say in this video is going to be in part building on what I said in the last video. I'll put a link in the description box down below so you can easily access it and then come back and watch this video, which I think will then make more sense. This book is a classic, How to Master the English Bible, and in the second half of this video, I'm going to be talking about how to start building the commentary section of your biblical resource library, and there's a story from this book that really helps me to think through how I would not only build the commentary portion of my personal library, but also how I would uh, study and approach scripture from a literary and historical perspective. That'll make more sense when I share the story and when I uh, elaborate in just a minute on the commentary portion. Before I get to that, I want to show you a couple other resources that I would recommend. So in my previous video, just quick reminder for those who've seen it, I recommended resources that will help you understand you study scripture on your own. Common, uh, uh, Concordance, Bible Dictionary, Harmony of the Gospels, and some other tools like that. Where I would go from there is not necessarily to commentaries. I would get a book that helps me interpret scripture. So here are two examples. How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth by Fee and Stewart and Grasping God's Word by Duval and Hayes. Why this is important, why a book about interpreting scripture is important is because Bible readers need to understand how to read, interpret, and apply the different literary genres, for example, that are found in Scripture. So, how do we read a historical narrative as opposed to Hebrew poetry? How do we interpret and apply a parable versus interpreting and apply apocalyptic literature? So, it really helps to uh, read a book on that subject to think through how you're reading certain sections of scripture. So this is really the classic in this space, how to read the Bible for all it's worth. You could probably find used copies of this book for under $10. This is the second edition. I don't think it matters what, it, it doesn't matter what edition you're going to get valuable information from this book. And I think it's worthwhile to have on your shelf and it's going to be the most affordable option. But if you wanted something a little bit more substantial, that still, I would say, is introductory in nature. It would be this one, Grasping God's Word, subtitle, A Hands-On Approach to Reading, Interpreting, and Applying the Bible. When I have taught interpreting the Bible to undergraduates, uh, this is the book that I have used. So, um, in our approach at our school, we have new students take Interpreting the Bible before or at the same time that they're taking introduction to the New Testament and introduction to the Old Testament because they're encountering things like different literary genres and learning to interpret God's word helps them to do that. There's other skills and techniques though that are mentioned in this book too, like how to do word studies. And again, so like a con uh, concordance that I showed you in the last video uh, will be helpful um, to doing word studies, but this, this chapter here walks you through how to do a word study. So my point for these, showing you these two resources is that I would recommend a book on how to interpret the Bible as kind of a, a next step, even before commentaries. The next resource I want to show you is a pretty big resource here. Um, it's a theological dictionary. And this is the Evangelical Dictionary of Theology. I'm showing you this one because it's kind of a classic. It's so big, it's not even really fitting in my frame here. But um, this one's over 1,300 pages in length. Like the name, dictionary suggests it's an A to Z arrangement of theological words, terms, phrases, names, subjects that you can look up and you can read a short essay or short article on, on that topic. So uh, you understand how a dictionary works, so I'm not going to elaborate any more than that. But uh, just for an example, here is an article on uh, justification. So this is under the J's. And this particular one looks to be about six pages in length. They're not all six pages in length. Some, some terms and phrases are only a few uh, paragraphs in length, but justification's a pretty important concept. And so uh, there's more space devoted to it. In my Thursday video that I will release uh, in a few days, 
um, I'm going to show you five different theological dictionaries. So this one's a little bit more mid-level, a little bit more advanced. It's going to be the most advanced one I show you in that video. But there are some theological dictionaries that are paperbacks that are probably about 10 bucks. And uh, so I'll show you those in a few days so you can just see some more some more options. But in general, I would recommend um, a theological dictionary for this for a second phase of building your library. All right. So before I get to this story and how to master the English Bible um, and talk about building a commentary section, there's two types of commentaries that I want to draw your attention to first. I'm not necessarily recommending the series or even necessarily the volume, but it's just the types of commentaries that I want to make a comment on. The first is introductory commentaries. It's a great place to begin building a, your commentary section of your personal library. This series is a good representative example of what you can find in an introductory commentary. This is the Christ-centered exposition commentary, Exalting Jesus in John. So this is on the Gospel of John. So in this book, there's basic explanation of every passage in the book of John. And what's really nice about this resource is it does provide some application suggestion, but also at the end of every Every passage, there are 10 different questions that either the reader, you can go through these questions on your own and read them, or they'd be great for a small group or a Sunday school class or a Bible study or a youth group or something like that. The questions are a combination of making sure that you understand the passage. So it's asking clarification questions about uh, what you just read, and then also application questions as well. Um, like this one here, have you taken time today to worship Jesus or what is your routine, daily routine of worshiping Jesus? And so an introductory commentary is really designed for people who they've never been to Bible college or seminary. Um, you know, they might not be in full-time ministry. They might be lay people, lay leaders, like leading a small group or something like that. So here's another type of introductory commentary, and this one doesn't have any discussion questions in it, but one of the benefits of this one is it's really helpful to visual learners because there's so many pictures. So I think anytime we're new to a subject, whether it's biblical studies or, or anything else, it's just visual, being able to visualize what we're learning is just really helpful. So, and this series is... Um, the Zondervan Illustrated Bible Backgrounds Commentary Series. It's just, and this is the book of John also, it's just filled with full color pictures like this one here. And there's lots of charts and maps and it's just really helpful, I think, to people who are new to the subject to read the explanation on the page and then be able to visualize some aspect of what's being discussed. So I recommend this one for the discussion questions and the explanations. I recommend this one for the explanations and the pictures. Either way, the general idea is an introductory commentary as opposed to a mid-level commentary or an advanced commentary. The other type of commentary that I would recommend for the early stages of your biblical resource library is a one volume commentary. So these are two good options, but there are other good options out there as well. This one by, is the Baker Illustrated Bible Commentary. Like the last book I just showed you, there's lots of pictures and maps and charts in this, which people, a lot of beginners will find uh, very helpful. It's a very big book, so it's a little bit more expensive, but it does cover all 66 books of the Bible. I'm showing you this one, which doesn't have, I don't think it has any, it might have some maps, but it doesn't have any full color pictures or anything like that, because uh, I'm showing you this one because it's uh, generally considered the best reviewed one volume commentary on the Bible. So I think this is a great resource to, to add to any library. And so before I would build out and get commentaries on individual books of the Bible, I would consider one volume Bible commentaries. And I'd also consider um, introductory Bible commentaries as as well, like I just showed you. So again, this is introductory, one volume, highly visual. This is more mid-level, less visual, but it's going to have a lot more information in it than this one. All right. So let me get to this story now. So this is a classic book called How to Master the English Bible by James Gray. This is, uh, I believe it's in the public domain, so you can probably find this book online. It's under 175 pages, and look at the font is really big. It, it does not take long to read. You could probably read, most a lot of people could read it in one sitting. And uh, as it's what it's about is how to master the Bible. And 
he tells a story that I found uh, very helpful uh, when I first read it a long time ago. He's Gray was talking about some missionaries who were in an Asian country. I can't remember which one now. And they started a Bible class or a Bible school for um, new converts so they could help to help them understand the Bible and help them to un- master master the Bible. And so for some reason, they decided to start in the New Testament book of Hebrews. And what happened was, as they began teaching through the book of Hebrews, the students had questions. Well, how come the writer is saying this? Or what is that explanation about? Or, you know, what does this verse mean? And so forth. And, and what happened was the teachers kept going back to the book of Leviticus, because as some of you know, a lot of um, the imagery and theology and the teaching on in Hebrews, New Testament book of Hebrews, is based on the Old Testament teaching in the book of Leviticus. So they started going through Hebrews and there's so many questions. They said, okay, we'll get back to Hebrews uh, in the future. Let's go back to Leviticus and start there. And then they'll understand Hebrews better. So they went back to Leviticus and they started reading Leviticus and teaching Leviticus. And the same thing happened. All these questions came up. Well, why this and why that? And they said, well, it has to do with the book of Exodus and coming out of Egypt. And so, so eventually they stopped going, teaching through Leviticus and they went back to Exodus. And so now they start teaching through Exodus and the same thing happened all these questions surfaced and the only way that the teachers could answer them was by pointing to Genesis, the first book of the Bible. And so then eventually they stopped teaching through Exodus and just went back to Genesis and started at the beginning of the Bible. So this, so here is my point to, to the story in my, in the first video, what I recommended for new believers and people who are new to biblical studies is to major on the gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, major on the Gospels, to, to, to help you understand Jesus, to increase your faith, to grow in Christ-likeness, all of those wonderful things. When it comes to mastering the Bible as a literary document or as a historical document, there is wisdom in starting with the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. Now, and I make that statement, it's not a theological statement. It's a technique for how to master the literature and history of scripture. Why is that the case? You think about other sections of the Old Testament, the history books, all point back to the law. The wisdom literature, a lot of it points back to the law, and by law I mean Pentateuch, it points back to the Pentateuch. Uh, The wisdom literature points back to the Pentateuch. The prophets, what are they correcting based on? Uh, what are they rebuking based on? What are they encouraging based on? It's what's written in the Pentateuch. Um, the rest of the authors of the Old Testament, they're constantly drawing on Abraham, Isaac, and Moses in Genesis, or Abraham, <laughs> Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Genesis, uh, Moses in the book of Exodus. They're constantly pointing to the law or the tabernacle when it comes to worship. It's all the subject matter that comes from the Pentateuch. Um, so the New Testament as well. Jesus is talks a lot about the Pentateuch. He quotes from the Pentateuch. Paul alludes to the Pentateuch. He quotes from the Pentateuch. So the, the strategy is to, so this is how I would start building the individual commentaries in my library. I would start with the Gospels and the Pentateuch. The Gospels, because they are the biographies of Christ, and the Pentateuch, because that's going to provide the literary and historical foundation for other sections. So if, if Jesus or Paul or Isaiah or the Psalms are referencing something or someone in the Pentateuch, I will have those resources to understand all of the backgrounds of those quotations um, and allusions. So in my next video, I'll talk about some individual commentaries. The last thing that I want to show you in this video is that there are some introductions to those two sections of scripture. Um, These are two good ones, but there are other good ones as well. So here is one. So it's not necessarily the entire commentary, you know, a commentary on each individual book of the Pentateuch, but this is a handbook on the Pentateuch. The reason why I'm showing you this one is because Victor Hamilton has written some of the best reviewed commentaries on uh, Genesis and Exodus. So this this um, 
would be a valuable resource. And it's, it's a handbook. So it's a very small commentary on all five of these books and providing overviews. So I just think oh, it might be a good place to start even before you got individual volume on each of the first five books of the Pentateuch. The uh, other one is... Um, Jesus in the Gospels, an introduction and survey by Craig Blomberg, and it's the same idea. It's he's uh, Blomberg is walking you through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and it's a it's an introduction or and it's an overview of those sections. So I think resources like this would be helpful um, to to your to building your biblical resources library. And then whether, but if you utilize these or not, I think now is the right time to build out your uh, commentaries of individual books of the Bible, just as I've thought it through. Anyway, and, and again, you know, I'm making recommendations, um, uh, you know, look for ideas, look for gaps. That's how I would watch these videos. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please consider liking uh, the video that helps me out and feel free to leave a comment or ask a question down below. See you next time.